Hey everybody, you saw the power switch uh, piece that I did. I'm going to do a couple of pieces on hand throw switches. Uh, doesn't take very long, so I'm going to put those two in the same video. I'm going to start out here at cable on the number one track, the hand throw switch for the uh, cable spur. And it has a Model 10 type low electric lock. Uh, it's one of the newer ones that we use. That's not a new model. They've been around for a long time. We just haven't been using them around here all that long. And uh, this one and this particular one here actually replaced a come out signal that used to be here. But anyhow, we'll go check out the Model 10, see how it works. Okay, here we are just uh, south of Cable where we did the power switch. This is a hand throw switch. This is the uh, called the cable spur. I'm going to use this track to store equipment in. It's where I shot the uh, video on the uh, equipment segment, the track equipment that I did. Okay, the dispatcher talking to people over there on the radio. I've got uh, tracking time on the number one track. And uh, I never did mention down a cable. I had foul time. This is the same day, just a few minutes later. Uh, the reason the shunt cord's laying there, I do testing here. Uh, what we have here is a hand throw switch. This is this switch has to be thrown by hand and it is an electrically locked switch and that right there is the Model 10 electric lock. Uh, these are the ones we have gone to over the last 10 years or so. Uh, they still use on some other parts of my territory. I have the SL6 high locks and we'll see those next. But anyway, the way an electric lock works is if there are are no trains on the approach either direction to this uh, to this signal block where this switch is or if there are no signals cleared you can just walk up here unlock this lock take it out you can see that little green light in there it tells you the switch is ready to unlock you step on that piece unlock it throw the switch maybe holy cats I'm not gonna throw that without jumping up and down on it hmm I've told track guys about that but anyway and uh, that is switch rod it goes out here attached to that switch rod there between the points that throws the switch this front rod here belongs to us that one belongs to the track department the, the throw rod number two rod or the number one rod, I'm sorry. And this one is, as is at the uh, power switch machine, has a point detector, and it is attached to this, which is called a U5 switch circuit controller box. Sorry for that little break. I actually had to turn off my camera and return that to its normal position. This switch is very difficult to throw uh, in either direction, but anyway, these are the inner workings of the Model 10, and anyway, this one's a little different. You can see those LEDs there, and if you close this lid, that's how you know the switch is unlocked. And you can see those lights inside there, the little LEDs, lighted green. That means you can unlock the lock. If uh, the lock isn't going to unlock, that light simply won't light. To you like it, step on that, stick your lock back in there, and we're up and running again. And uh, again, as with uh, the SL6, it does have a U5 box that follows the switch point, indicates that. If it's open a quarter inch or more, we'll put the signals to stop direction coming this way that runs into that junction box and goes down to that house all right that is how the model 10 electric lock works all right so that's how the model 10 works uh, let's move on to the SL6 high lock type of electric lock down the roadways Hey everybody, uh, the next segment we're going to do here is the 
SL6 high lock type electric locks. Uh, we're out here the other side of Mojave, and uh, this will be the last type of switch we do. We're all, I'm also going to do a little piece on just uh, hand throws that don't have locks. There's a derail here, and uh, I'll go over that when I get there. And uh, this will be the last segment. So let's get going with the SL6 high lock electric lock. Okay, we are here at the south end of Fleeta, which is actually one of the original sidings between Mojave and Palmdale. This is south of Mojave, uh, about five miles where we are right now. And the uh, reason we're here is the uh, last segment I did with the electric lock at cable, the low lock. Um, that type, the lock and the mechanism to throw the switch are all one piece. That is not the case. This is a union switch and signal SL6 electric lock. They call them high locks. That's the lock right there and it has a separate switch stand. You unlock that lock and use that handle. Lift that handle up. That rod's attached to the switch points and that throws the switch. The way this is electrically locked is you acquire some tracking time from the dispatcher, which I've done. And then you come out here, unlock this lock, which I've already done. Open this door. This particular location has what's called a short time. It runs about 30 seconds before the lock will unlock. If there are any trains on either approach, either north or south, or as when we test it, we put a shunt down right there. If you do that, this will not unlock until it has run a time of nine minutes. And that is based on a formula that's uh, based on uh, train speeds, and the distance to the closest control point or the last signal that a train may have went by. Uh, it gives them time to get here and get by before someone could uh, actually open this. If someone were to come out and vandalize this and try to open it, they couldn't just open, they couldn't just do that. There's uh, nothing out either way. As I have tracking time out here and I don't have joint time. There's a little flag in there. There you just saw it go from lock to unlock. And now I can rotate this lever over here. That lifts the plunger up. That lever is attached to this rod here that rotates this cam. And these contacts all have different functions to tell the system in the case what's going on out here. I'm not gonna get into what all that is. You have an emergency release here, but the this rod is also attached to a rotating offset plate. Back here you can't really see it, but it's actually attached by a pin to a plunger that goes down through this here. This is hollow. There's a hole in the bottom of that rod right there, underneath there. The plunger goes through that hole, and that's how that's electrically locked. And once the system tells you that it's okay to open the switch, then that's when you rotate that lever that pulls that plunger up out of that rod and you can actually throw the switch. I'm not going to throw the switch because I don't need to. But uh, this is the emergency release here. It's got, a, it's got a wire keeper on that. If a train crew were to come out here and this uh, ran its time and still wouldn't unlock, they would break this called a seal. They'd break the seal lift this tab up, push that button, and they'd be able to operate the switch. But as soon as you open that door, if you don't have permission from the dispatcher, as soon as you open that door, it will turn all the signals coming in here red. And uh, that's a safety feature. Close that door. Track indication goes away. And you can go give your tracking time back and they can start running trains again. Uh, another something uh, a little factoid about the SL6 is this is made by Union Switch and Signal, which has actually been bought by 
Uh, I can't even remember which. There's so many. Unsaldo, I think. I can't remember. They've been bought up by big international railroad conglomerations. But they haven't made an SL6 since 1944. Uh, they're almost impossible to get parts for anymore, but they're very solid pieces of equipment. We've had them in service since the 20s, I think, is when they started making them. And still going strong. Uh, as with uh, the other type of hand throw, electric lock, this is a switch circuit controller. Works exactly the same way. The switch opens more than a quarter of an inch, puts up the track indication. And uh, that is how... And SL6 works. Okay, this is a U5 switch circuit controller, and it is utilized at hand throw switches. And the way that works is right there's the switch stand, and that's what they'll unlock that, and that's connected to the points, just like up at cable, and when that starts to move, that crank arm on the side of the box there that's connected to this cam right here, that crank arm will start to follow the switch points. That rod is connected to the switch there, as you can see. And uh, it follows the switch point. The switch point opens, that moves. If it opens a quarter inch or more, it will put the signals to stop. And the, and the way that works is through this cam right here as the as the rod moves it moves these cams this way counterclockwise they will fall off a little tit they have that they sit on and that will open right here these two contacts are the ones that are working and that will drop that back and these contacts will go back against that reverse contact you have a uh, you have a, a normal a heel and a reverse the heel will go back against the reverse. That will open and shunt the uh, normal switch repeater circuit. Go see that junction box there. Over the case over there. And does the magic that makes the signals red or green. All right, that's how U5 box works. And this is a derail switch. Going along the tracks, you see that big D on that target right there? That's what that means. This is a derail and the function of a derail. As you can see, this switch doesn't have two points. It doesn't have a technically a normal or reverse. The switch is normally open, and that is a clear position. The signals will be clear coming and going out here as long as that derail is open. If uh, that closes more than a half an inch, it will put up a red signal, just like opening that switch up there would do if you open it a quarter of an inch. And uh, the function of this, and the reason we have these, is if you have some cars parked in this siding and they were to get away for some reason, or if you had a train in here working and they weren't paying attention and didn't have permission to go out on the main line, and this derail switch was in its normal position as it is right now. It would derail the train, as you can see, It would put the wheels of the train out against those rails there and derail it out away from the main line. Uh, it would put up an indication at the same time and uh, somebody would be in trouble for not tying a train down properly or for shoving it through this derail uh, without uh, permission to go this far. But uh, anyway. It doesn't have any type of electrically locking device. All you got to do is unlock that lock and throw it. And when you do, it puts the indication up on the main line. But to uh, use this switch, you would already have permission from the dispatcher to occupy the main line. All right. Well, that'll conclude my segment on switches, power and hand throw. I hope it was informative. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed doing it. And uh, if you have any ideas or comments, leave them in the section below or shoot me an email. And I'll see what we can do about uh, taking care of that. You guys all take care. And we'll see you all later.